Good morning, good morning, hello, and welcome to this date in history, also known as TDH. We are early, uh, specifically by one hour today, because I have a, um, a washing machine repairman coming between 10 and 1, so, uh, can't have him coming in the middle of the show now, can we? So, the show is an hour early. Sorry about that. Anyway, this show is all about the events that occurred to date in years past, both recognized by actual historians, but mainly things that we personally find intriguing enough for us to bring to you. The sources of this information comes from the Smart Device application, <coughs> pardon me, Today in History, What Happened Today in History, Historical Calendar, and the website on thisday.com. For links to those sources, the music, and anything else potentially interesting that we might gather throughout the show, check the underbar of the description below. Anyway, I am A.O. Xander, and today is Freya's Day, also known as Friday, July 8th, 2022. Yep. July 4th times 2 equals July 8th. Although I'm not sure if the math works out on that, but I really don't care. I do not mathematize that well. Anyway, in 1283, the War of the Sicilian Vespers, the Battle of Malta, occurred. Hmm. Showing up into 1497, Portuguese navigator Vasco da Gama departed on his first voyage, will become the first European to reach India by sea. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, so much for uh, Columbus, right? That was 1492, so almost, though. Just uh, half a world away. 1663, King Charles II of England granted a charter to Rhode Island. Nice. 1672, William III was appointed Stadtholder by the States General in the Netherlands. Stadtholder. What is Stadtholder? What is Stadtholder? Stadtholder. Uh, Stadtholder? Stadtholder. Um, Stadtholder. Uh, the Chief Magistrate of the United Provinces of the Netherlands. Pardon me, Netherlands. Okay. So, Stadtholder, not Stadtholder. Okay, well, my source really needs to um, brush up on things. Anyway, 1731, a theologi uh, theologian Jonathan Edwards preached his sermon, God Glorified in Man's Dependence, in Boston. This was later his first published sermon. <sighs> cool. 1776, Colonel John Nixon gave the first public reading of the Declaration of Independence to an assemblage of citizens in Philadelphia. Nice. Yep. In 1935, the Liberty Bell cracked again. I didn't realize it cracked twice. Uh, man, that reminds me of that video I saw. Measure a crack three times and each time it was longer. I'm splitting into two people! 1836, Charles Darwin reached St. Helena in HMS Beagle and took up lodgings near the tomb of Napoleon. Hmm. Interesting. 1853, Commodore Matthew C. Perry sailed his frigate uh, Susquehanna into Tokyo Bay, opening Japan to Western influence and trade. And speaking of Japan, yes, I know what happened. That is, uh, that sucks. But the world's on fire, and, uh, Nothing seems to be extinguishing it. 1862, U.S. Morrill Anti-Bigamy Act was signed by Abraham Lincoln, but it is not enforced. What is that? Let me look this up. U.S. Morrill Anti-Bigotry Act. It was the first basic federal legislation by the Congress of the U.S. that was designed to punish and prevent the practice of polygamy in the U.S. Ah. Well, I am uh, all for that. So I'm going to add this into the underbar. Let's see here. Where's the underbar? There's the underbar. Add. Yes. If you love somebody, love them. You can't love more than one person that way, honestly. I mean, it's, it's supposed to be special. Once it starts being multiple people, then it starts losing its luster. So, 1889, John L. Sullivan successfully defended the last officially sanctioned bare knuckle uh, World Heavyweight Prize Fighting Championship. Jake Kilrin's trainer throws in the towel after 75 times one minute round near ha Hattsburg, Mississippi. 75 rounds? Like a bare knuckle boxing? God, these people were tough. What happened to us? We're a bunch of pansies today, aren't we? 1896, Charles Tupper reigned, uh, no, resigned as Prime Minister of Canada after losing the June 23rd election. His 69-day term was the shortest in Canadian history. Hmm. Well, box that up in some Tupperware. 
See what I did there? 1986, Orator William Jennings Bryan's Cross of Gold speech at the Democratic Convention of Chicago uh, was uh, was done. All right, Cross of Gold. In the year 1898, U.S. battle fleet under Admiral George Dewey occupied Isla Grande at Manila. Hmm. Moving on up into 1902. Man, look at this guy. What a lurch. Baltimore manager John McGraw was accused uh, by AL President Ban, uh, or by American League President Ban Johnson, of trying to wreck the Orioles and Washington Senators. Negotiations, uh, oh, that negotiates his release from the Orioles, having already signed with the New York Giants. All right. 1911, Wimbledon's men's tennis. Wimbledon, go away. All right, fuck. Anthony Wilding of New Zealand won the second of four consecutive Wimbledon singles titles, beating Herbert Roper Barrett 6 to 4, 4 to 6, 2 to 6, 6 to 2. Retired? What is Red? <coughs> Retaining? I don't know. I need uh, some sports people on the show. Come and help me. Two years later, 1913, Alfred Carlton Gilbert's patent for the Erector set was issued. It became one of the most popular toys of all time. Ah, yes. I remember. In uh, the movie The Sandlot, they had one of those trying to retrieve the ball from the evil dog that eats people. Two more years later, in 1915, the Germans replied to U.S. President Woodrow Wilson's second Lusitania note by saying that Americans may sail on clearly marked neutral ships, but Germany does not deal with Wilson's other demands. Alright. 1922, Wimbledon's women's tennis, French phenom Suzanne Lenglen won her fourth consecutive Wimbledon singles title, defeating U.S.-based Norwegian Mola Bajur Tete uh, Mallory 6-2 and 6-0. 365 days later, in 1923, Warren G. Harding became the first U.S. sitting president to visit Alaska, specifically uh, Metal... Metal... Metalak... Why can't I read this? Metlakatla. Malakalikimaka. I don't know. Ten years later, 1933, British Open Men's Golf at St. Andrews. Denny Shute beat fellow U.S. Craig Wood by five strokes in a 36-hole Saturday playoff to win his only Open title. 1933 as well. Wimbledon Women's Tennis, U.S. Helen Wills Moody successfully defended her title, defeating local favorite Dorothy Round by 6 to 4, 6 to 8, 6 to 3. 1939, Wimbledon's Women's Tennis, U.S. Alice Marble won her only Wimbledon singles title, beating Kay Stammers of England 6 to 2, 6 to 0. 1943, National Socialist Beuging, the Dutch National Socialist Movement. Uh, leader Anton Musseret met with Heinrich Himmler. Ooh, that's not good. Ah, uh, those Netherlands people. Bunch of fascists. <clears throat> 1950, General Douglas MacArthur was named Commander-in-Chief of UN Forces in Korea. And we should have listened to him and nuked China when we had the chance. 1951, Yankee Joe DiMaggio and manager Casey Sangville feuded. Okay, whoop de do. People have fights. Why is it reported? 1957, the first Pugwash Conference, the Thinker's Lodge, held on nuclear disarmament at Pugwash, Nova Scotia, Canada, was founded by Joseph Rockblatt and hosted by Cyrus Eaton. Also in 1957, Irish Premier Eamon de Valera arrested Sinn Féin leaders. Sinn Féin. What's Sinn Féin? Let's look that up here real quick. Sinn Féin. It is an Irish Republican and Democratic Socialist political party active throughout both the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. The original Sinn Féin organization was founded in 1905 by Arthur Griffin. So, uh, is it still around? Um, maybe. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not going to look it up, but I will be adding this link into the underbar, the description below, for future reading for you. 1963, Wimbledon's women's tennis, Australian Margaret Smith won her first of three Wimbledon titles, beating Billie Jean Moffat 6-3 and 6-4. Two years later, 1965, Joe Morgan was the first Houston player with six hits in a game. Nice. 1975, Israeli Premier Yitzhak Rabin visited West Germany. Ooh. Yep. Yep, that happened. 1975, U.S. President Gerald Ford announced he'd seek Republican presidential nomination. Mm. 
1978 Wimbledon's men's tennis, Bjorn Bjorg of Sweden won his third straight Wimbledon singles crown, beating U.S. Jimmy Connors 6-2, 6-2, and 6-3. I think there's a spider in my collar, I'm not sure. One year later, 1979, Voyager 2 took the first ever photo of Jupiter's satellite, uh, Adresida, which is named J-14. Let's uh, take a look at what this looked like. <clears throat> ah, that's a nice photo. Beautiful. Yep. What else happened on this date? 1982, Billy Martin recorded his 1,000th career win as manager. Nice. Nice, really nice. <coughs> Two years later, 1984, Wimbledon's men's tennis. John McEnroe defended his crown, thrashing fellow U.S. Jimmy Carter, 6-1, 6-1, Damn. That got wrecked. 1988, Stevie Wonder announced that he will run for mayor of Detroit in 1992, but he does not follow through. Well, who saw that coming? I'm going to hell. 1990, Wimbledon men's tennis. Stefan Edberg defeated Boris Becker 6-2, 6-2, 3-6, 3-6, 6-4 for his second Wimbledon singles crown. 1994, preliminary trial rules. There is enough evidence to try O.J. Simpson. Yeah, but not to get him convicted, unfortunately. And then he later came out with the book, If I Did It. You know? Basically, straight up admitting the crime and laughing about it. All the way to the bank, mind you. He made money off of that. 1995, Wimbledon Women's Tennis. German superstar Steffi Graf defeated uh, Arantuxa Sanchez Vicario of Spain. Uh, four to six, six to one, seven to five for her sixth Wimbledon title. Nice. One year later, 1996, British girls group The Spice Girls released their debut single "Wannabe" in the UK. Mm. 1999, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, the third book of the series by J.K. Rowling, was published by Bloomsbury in the UK. Yeah, J.K. Rowling, freaking liberal nut making Dumbledore gay. Why does it matter? Anyway, 2000, Wimbledon Women's Tennis, Venus Williams won her first career Grand Slam singles title, beating fellow U.S. Lindsay Davenport 6-3, 7-6. Hmm. 2005, Marvel superhero film The Fantastic Four, starring Ian Gruford, Jessica Alba, Chris Evans, and Michael Chiklis premiered. Hmm. 2007, Wimbledon's Men's Tennis, Wimbledon! Come on! I, if I do one more Wimbledon, I swear to God. Roger Frederier of Switzerland won the singles title for a fifth consecutive year. Beat Spaniard Rafael Nadal 7-6, 4-6, 7-6, 2-6, 6-2. Is it just me or does this guy kind of look a little bit like Justin Trudeau? Just a little bit. I mean, especially with the hair. I don't know. 2008, U.S. businessman T. Bone Pickens announced his Pickens plan as an emergency policy that moved away from imported oil. Good. Two years later, in 2010, Inception, directed by Christopher Nolan and starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Joseph Gordon-Levitt, premiered in London. That's a moon. That's an interesting movie that I have never seen before yet. 2012, tens of thousands processes over election corruption in Mexico City after Enrique Peña Nieto's won in the country's presidential election. Ah, uh, surprise, surprise, corruption. 2014, FIFA World Cup, Germany defeated Brazil by a record 7-1 in the semifinals to make it to the final. Uh, Miroslav Kos of, or Kos of Germany broke the World Cup goal scoring record with 16 goals. Dang. Also in 2014, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu instructed his defense forces to take their gloves off against Hamas and to take any means necessary to restore peace to Israeli citizens. Yeah, that sounds like the words of a dictator. Yep. I don't know. Yep. 2018, British Brexit Secretary David Davis resigned in a stand against Theresa May's new softer Brexit policy. Hmm. And 2021, just last year, a tiny Leonardo da Vinci sketch head of a bear the size of a post-it sold for 8.9 million pounds, or 12.2 million US dollars, at an auction in London. Dang. Also, 2021, US 
president, Joe Biden. Uh, let's go, Brandon! <laughs> said U.S. troops will withdraw from Afghanistan by August 31st, despite increased Taliban gains across the country. Oh, God, here we go. Here we go. And I knew some guy. I, I knew some guy. He lives up in Maine, and he straight up said, Oh, well, fuck those people. You know what? Jace, if you're watching, fuck you. You inhuman piece of shit. Anyway, 1831, John Pendleton was a, uh, oh yeah, before we do, uh, births and deaths. Um, any articles grab your attention today? You know, any questions, any answers, anything you want to talk about? Let's open a dialogue in the comment section. Let's go. Moving on into, bur uh, uh, into births, starting us off in the year 1831, we have John Pemberton. He was a American pharmacist, inventor of Coca-Cola, born in Knoxville, Georgia, dying in 1888. So this guy is a reason. Did you know that police officers carry two liter bottles of Coke because, uh, and not just any cola, but specifically Coca-Cola, because it has chemicals in there that actually, like, clean off dried blood on concrete in a crime scene. And you drink it. Stop it. Not only is it bad for you physically, but now Coca-Cola is bad for you politically. Boycott Coca-Cola. And PepsiCo and everything else with Monsanto and everything. Monsanto being owned by Bill Gates and it's a whole pyramid of stuff going on behind the scenes that most people don't even know about. Anyway, 1838, Ferdinand von Zeppelin was born on this date. He, wa he was the German general and inventor of the rigid dirigible who found the Zeppelin Airship Company, born in Konstanz, Grand Duchy of Baden, Germany, dying in 1917. Mm. 1839, we have John D. Rockefeller, was a American industrialist and founder of Standard Oil. He was born in Richford, New York, dying in 1937. And I really hope I didn't hear a knock on the door. 1908, we have Louis Jordan, was a American music, uh, U.S. musician, songwriter, and band leader. Uh, Caldonia Choo Choo Chiboogie, ain't nobody here but us chickens, born in Brinkley, Arkansas, dying in 1975. Nelson Rockefeller was born on the state in 1908 as well. He was the U.S. politician, a vice president from 1974 through 1977, governor of New York, Republican, 1959 through 73. He was born in Bar Harbor, Maine, dying in 1979. 1913, Walter Kerr was a U.S. actor and writer, uh, specifically for Goldilocks, and a Broadway theater critic. He was born in Evanston, Illinois, by, uh, dying in 1996. <clears throat> 1931, saw Rune Alridge get born on this date. He is a U.S. sports broadcasting pioneer, president of ABC Sports, Monday Night Football, and ABC News. He was born in New York City, New York, dying in 2002, just 20 years ago. Wow. 2002. 20 years ago. Soak that in. 2002. 20 years ago. Man. I'm old. Good thing I already have a cane over here, you know? Anyway, actually this, you know, I have a cane right here. It's not even my cane. You know, I've been waiting to give it back to the proper owner, but he's never, uh showed his face back here again because he's a fucking coward. Anyway, 1951, Angelica Hudson was a, or is a U.S. actress uh, for Prizzy's Honor and the Addams Family. Born in Los Angeles, California. Mm. 1961, Toby Keith or Koval is a U.S. country singer, should have been a cowboy and she never cried in front of me, and actor, Broken Bridges, born in Clinton, Oklahoma. Hmm. 1970 saw Todd Martin get born on the state. He is a U.S. tennis player. He's uh, playing in the 1988 USTA Boys 18. Born in Hinsdale in Illinois. Ooh. It ain't no noise, it's Illinois. I'm too white to do that. I'm sorry, I apologize. Moving on up into deaths. In 1538, we have Diego de Almagro, Spanish conquistador of Chile and Peru, executed at Las Salinas at the age of about 80, uh, 63. Hmm. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. And the pen is mightier than the sword. But I have a hairbrush. 
1695, Christian Hugues, Dutch mathematician, astronomer, he discovered Saturn's rings, and he was a scientist specifically in dynamics, dying at the age of 66. Well, that's interesting. This is the discoverer of Saturn's rings. Hmm. You know, he likes Saturn, so he put a ring on it. He put seven. 1967, we have Fatima Jinnah, the mother of Pakistan, sister and close advisor of Muhammad Ali Jinnah. Died officially of a heart failure at the age of 73, but rumors of foul play by the military junta persist. Yep. 1967, Vivian Lee passed away on the stage. She was an English actress, Gone with the Wind, a streetcar named Desire. Died of tuberculosis at 53. Dang. Tuberculosis. Still a prevalent issue in today's world. We lost Arthur Morgan to that dreadful disease. So. 1994, Kim Il-sung, founder, dictator, and supreme leader of North Korea from 1948 through 1994, died of a heart attack at the age of 82. And he will not be missed. Neither will his son. And when, when the third in line goes, he won't be missed just as equally. And Betty Ford died on the state in 2011. She was the first lady of the U.S. from 1974 through 77 and founder of the Betty Ford Center Clinic, died at 93. 2012, just 10 years ago, Ernest Borgine was uh, passed away on the state. He was a U.S. actor for Ice Station Saber and Marty. He died from renal failure at the age of 95. That sucks. What is renal failure, anyway? It's probably something gross. Uh, oh, kidney failure, okay. Then uh, we have, oh, that's right, today, yep. Uh, Shijo Abe, Prime Minister of Japan from 2006 to 2007 and 2012 to 2020. He was shot twice and assassinated at the age of 67 while giving a speech in Nara, Japan. That happened today. Not today a year ago, not today three years ago, but today, right now, today. This is actually news. This ain't history. This is news. So, God, what is the world going to? Anyway, that concludes the show for this day. Uh, once again, you can check the owner bar in the description for any links that you may find interesting. For your dose of past events daily, we stream every day at 10 o'clock Pacific time in the morning, um, which is actually in about 38 minutes, but uh, I'm not going to do this show again. I already told you at the top of the show that I have a repair guy coming between 10 and 1, so I had to do the show early today. Anyway, for all of you and all of us, I am A.O. Xander, and you are you, and until you catch us tomorrow, do not forget to look right and left at every intersection. Seriously, people, be aware of your surroundings. Stop getting hit by cars. Come on. Um, rate five thumbs and subscribe, and until you catch us tomorrow, toodles! Let's go, Brandon. <laughs>